Hi students, we're starting dictation with our common dictation reminders. Remember that you should try to write as much as you can. Of course, you're not going to be able to catch every word from every sentence, and that's really okay if you can't catch all of the words. That's why you're here, is to improve your ability to listen and interpret spoken American English. Remember that we always practice the sentences multiple times. The first few times, you'll hear the sentences fast, using my reduced spoken American English. If you can't catch it, wait until the second practice, when we're going to be slowing the sentences down, using our more clear pronunciation, and then making comparison between the clear pronunciation and the reduced pronunciation of American English. Remember to be patient. This is a difficult skill to improve upon. Um, also remember that this isn't about speaking like me. This isn't a pronunciation activity. This is about adjusting your ear and improving your ability to listen to and interpret spoken American English so that you can easier, so that you can have an easier time understanding people um, at your child's school, at your work, at the grocery store. Are you feeling ready? Let's begin. All right, we're actually going to try something a little bit different with dictation today. Instead of six sentences, we have 10, which sounds a lot more complex, but the sentences themselves are a little bit easier. What we're looking at today is thinking about apostrophe S in a sentence. And when does apostrophe S mean is? And when does apostrophe S mean has? So all 10 of our sentences today have apostrophe S in them. At the end of the dictation, what I want you to establish, what I want you to decide for each number, numbers one through 10, I want you to decide is the verb is or is the verb has. Now apostrophe S can also show possessive. For example, um, the girl's house, meaning the house that belongs to the girl. We are not using any possessive apostrophe S in this activity. All of these are either the verb is or the verb has. I hope you'll like this and I hope it'll be a little bit complicated, but also that you'll find it easy to recognize them when we get to the end. All right, let's jump into our first practice here. Number one, it's never been done before. It's never been done before. It's never been done before. Number two, he's in Fargo this month. He's in Fargo this month. He's in Fargo this month. And if you're from outside of my classroom, don't worry about the spelling of Fargo. Just know that the name Fargo is a city. Number three, the city's improved a lot lately. The city's improved a lot lately. The city's improved a lot lately. Number four, She's traveling all month. She's traveling all month. She's traveling all month. Number five, how's she gonna help me? How's she going to help me? How's 
How is she going to help me? And don't forget the end of number five should have a question mark. Definitely this is a question, beginning with how. How is she going to help me? Number six. She's lived in Fargo since 2012. She's lived in Fargo since 2012. She's lived in Fargo since 2012. Seven. What's he doing this week? What's he doing this week? What's he doing this week? Number eight. What's he been doing this week? And even though eight sounds similar to seven, the verb is different between seven and eight. Again, number eight. What's he been doing this week? What's he been doing this week? Number nine. How's life been going? How's life been going? How's life been going? Number 10. My car is broken. My car is broken. My car is broken. All right, look back over your sentences. Remember that we're thinking about this apostrophe S. Is the apostrophe S is or is the apostrophe S has? Let's come one more time through the sentences. Number one, it's never been done before. Two, he's in Fargo this month. Three, the city's improved a lot lately. Four, she's traveling all month. Five, how's she going to help me? Six, She's lived in Fargo since 2012. Seven. What's he doing this week? Eight. What's he been doing this week? Nine. How's life been going? And 10, my car is broken. Before we come to our review and explanation, make sure that you go back over your 10 sentences and you're trying to decide for each sentence, was the verb is or was the verb has? We're not going to do an in-depth 
um, analysis of the connected words for every single sentence, we're just going to really focus on how do I know that this verb, this apostrophe S, is is, and how do I know that this one is has? All right, let's start with number one. It's never been done before. It's never been done before. Because I see the word been and I see um, apostrophe S together with the bin, definitely here my apostrophe S is has. It has. It has been. It has never been. It's never been done before. It's never been done before. Number two, he's in Fargo this month. He's in Fargo this month. When you look at the sentence, I hope you clearly see that this apostrophe S is the verb is. Simple, to be, present tense, third person. He is in Fargo this month. He's in Fargo this month. Number three, the city's improved a lot lately. The city's improved a lot lately. Because I see the ED, I see the third verb, the past participle, I know that this apostrophe S must be has. This is my present perfect verb. Um, number one, also present perfect verb. It has been. It has never been. The city has improved. The city's improved a lot lately. Number four, she's traveling all month. She's traveling all month. Because we have the ing, I hope that you can recognize this is my verb of be, she is, traveling with ing, my present continuous, she is traveling. She's traveling all month. Number five is our first question. How's she gonna help me? How's she gonna help me? I hope you hear the gonna. Remember that gonna is going to. And so if I have, how's she gonna, how's she going to? She, verb, going to has to be is. How is she going to help me? How's she going to help me? How's she going to help me? This is a really difficult pronunciation to hear because of how the S connects together. You don't hear how's she. You hear how's she. How's she. How's she going to help me? Moving on to number six. She's lived in Fargo since 2012. She's lived in Fargo since 2012. Again, because we see the ED, third verb, present participle, this must be has. She has lived. This is my present perfect verb. She began living in Fargo in 2012, and she's still continuing to live in Fargo. She's lived in Fargo since 2012. Number seven, what's he doing this week? What's he doing this week? Again, we see the ing, apostrophe s, he, Hmm. ing, he is. 
What is he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing this week? And then I wanted to immediately contrast between seven and eight. Number eight, what's he been doing this week? What's he been doing this week? Again, I hear the doing, but I also have been. This is not my present continuous. This is my present perfect continuous. He has been doing. What's he been doing this week? Number nine, how's life been going? How's life been going? Again, we see been, ing. So I know that this apostrophe s must be has. How has life been going? How's life been going? Number 10, I think was the easiest and the most difficult. My sentence was, my car is broken. My car is broken. This sentence, the apostrophe S, could be is, or it could be has. It would depend on the context around. For example, simple present, my car is, and my third verb here, broken, doing the job of adjective. My car is red, my car is old. Third verb, doing the job of adjective, my car is broken, present tense, right now. If my apostrophe S is has, my car is broken. This is sometime in the past, but we don't know when. Um, my car is broken a lot. My car has broken a lot these last few years. My car is broken all the time. Mm, all the time, routine, simple present. My car is broken a lot over the last five years. Began in the past, continued, repeated action in the past. My car has broken. Just my sentence, my car is broken. It's not enough to know, is this using is or is this using has? So that brings us to the end of this dictation. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. Did you like this practice or not? Was it easy for you to distinguish between apostrophe s as is and apostrophe s as has? Also, if you look below where the description is in the video, I'm going to link a PDF that you should be able to click and open on your personal device um, with an additional few sentences where you can read and try to distinguish is this apostrophe s, is, or has. As always, let me know in the comments how did you do. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that you'll get notifications when new videos are posted. See you later, students.